Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. And we're not going to recap. You can go back and get the videos and the audio files. Now therefore, and understand. Know therefore and understand. That from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince, capital P, capital M, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Now what we're reading right now, you see what your typical Baptist church will do. They will cover 27 verses in under 40 minutes. You know, Sunday school has an hour. Teaching time has an hour, but when you get all the tomfoolery and the antics and the uh, the, the the nonsense. You're given about 40 minutes. And this entire chapter would be done. And we're taking our time. Now I'm going to tell you why you tell your pastor that Stiley William Hayward, DD, dumb dog, is telling you why. There's several options. Number one, your pastor or your Sunday school teacher, or the teacher of your church does not know what he's talking about. Does not know. He has not been taught. You can blame his school. You can blame his elders. You can blame, you can blame his pastor. Don't know. Number two, the Christians don't care. They don't want... You know, they want a good fluffy told message on how well great I can be, how wonderful I am, how... They don't want to get into meat like this. But they will be the ones, and the pastor of the church will be the ones, we're going to do the book of Revelation. We just read a passage about the Revelation. We just read a passage about Jesus Christ. The Messiah, the Prince, capital M, capital P. I don't read my Old Testament. Now, first of all, in this, this verse, this is all we're going to do tonight, is that commandment. <laughs> we have a commandment, and we have a lot of information here. Now, we have two time periods, seven weeks, and three score and two weeks, 62 weeks. Seven weeks and 62 weeks. Now the tribulation period is seven years. Three and a half years and three and a half years of great tribulation. We're not going to look these verses up. Matthew 24, 21. Revelation 7, 14. 11, 2 and 3. 12, 6 and 14. And 13, 5. <clears throat> Now, the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem, what did it not say? Now, this is another problem we have in the churches. This is another problem we have in the Baptist churches. What did it not say? It didn't say temple. It said to build Jerusalem. Through the street shall be built in the wall. Not the building. And there's an error in a way where they'll go running to the temple. You know, everything's a temple in the church today. Welcome to the Lord's house. You ain't got the Lord's house. The Lord's house has got saved, saved and lost people? I don't think so. You got a building. Ezra was the temple. Nehemiah is the city. Now we have four decrees. We have Cyrus. 536 B.C. before Christ. To rebuild the temple. 
Ezra 1, 1 through 4. And I'm going to leave you to look these up on yourself tonight or tomorrow, or whenever you got time. I'll give you a little study. I'm giving you the verse. And if you don't, if you don't go and check them out, God's going to hold you accountable. Darius or Darius, 519 BC. After stopping the temple, Ezra 4, 17 through 24, this is to finish the second decree, Ezra 6, 7 to 12. Now what happens, they built the temple, in the middle of building the temple, they stop. Everything stops. So there's a second degree, get over there and finish building. The third one is Alexis, 458 BC before Christ. He sends Ezra to reestablish the daily sacrifice. That's the lamb in the morning, the lamb at night, and to organize the priesthood. Ezra 7, 11 to 26. So Ezra goes back, get everything in order in that temple. Do what you're supposed to do. Do what the law told you to do and how to do it. Then number four is Alexerxes, 445 B.C., before Christ. He sent Nehemiah to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, not the, not the temple. This is Nehemiah 2, 1 through 8. And then Nehemiah goes about Describing the gates and the walls and all that. The date, according to Daniel 9.25, is the date of Nehemiah chapter 2 when the decree goes for, we've already sent three decrees out already for the temple. The fourth one is the city called Jerusalem. When you look at Daniel... 925, a commandment to restore and build Jerusalem. Now we know that a decree is a commandment. And modern Bibles will say, instead, they will say, send forth a decree to restore and build. That's an error. Because decree is Gentile. Those are Gentile kings that set forth a Gentile order, a decree. What is known for the Jewish people? Well, what is the thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. What is that? The Ten Commandments. So it's authority by a Gentile rulership. Not in the land of Jerusalem, not in the land of Israel, where they have a decree, but to the Jews, it's a commandment. It is as strong as by God, Jehovah is, thou shalt build that temple, thou shalt build that city. Decree would have nothing for the Jewish people. The street shall be built again in the wall. So, it's not the temple. And all this day, I'm going to throw a whole bunch of years at you. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry that you don't. You need to go up to your pastor and say, Pastor, why aren't you teaching us anything? Why ain't Sunday school? Why ain't Sunday night? Why ain't, why, why ain't we learning? The Bible. Number one, you may not have the Bible. You may have every version. Pretty soon they're going to come out with the Disney version. I don't like it, so we're going to boycott it. Number two, you are not in the Word. You are not praying. The Bible says for you to study and show thyself, approve unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He said, well, Stiley, you went to institute. Didn't your pastor? Didn't the leaders of your church? Some of them are called doctors just like me. I say DD, dumb dog.
What's the silence? Now, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1. That will go. Nehemiah 2, 1. Because Ezra and Nehemiah play out what we're reading now. Nehemiah 2.1, the Bible says, And it came to pass in the month Nisan, and that's not a car. Oh look, there's an automobile. Your Bible angry. The 20th year of our Xerxes, the king. All right, so we have a date, the 20th year of our Xerxes. This would be 445 or 446 B.C. before Christ. In 446, he had a solo reign. Because there was a time that our Xerxes had a joint reign with his father. King David and King Solomon had a joint reign. While King David's on the throne, Solomon is anointed king of Israel. That's another problem. People have, well, what about the dates? And all? you got to understand. 446. He had his own, he had a joint reign. 445 is when he reigned on his own. And you had that with, with Belshazzar. Belshazzar is in Babylon, but his grandfather Nebuchadnezzar was out fighting out in another place. 445 BC to begin the 49 years, the seven weeks. You say, well, where'd you get that from, Stalin? You got to get the previous lesson. We looked at the seven. We looked at the 49. We don't have the time. <coughs> and you have the resources to go to the website of our family and get yet well, the other night's message. So, starting 445 B.C., for the 49 years and the seven weeks, at the close of the Hebrew canon, no more Old Testament, it's finished, 434 years, 62 weeks, to the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ. So that's the second number. 62 weeks. There's a gap between Calvary and the rapture. It's called the church age. The church age is not in Daniel. Though I, I know a pastor. They're all Christians in the Old Testament. You're a fool. Acts says they were first called Christians at Antioch. You need to have Christ's burial, resurrection. That was not in the book of Daniel. Christ had not even been born yet. So here we got one guy off on another ladder. He can't teach nothing if he thinks the, the Christians in the Old Testament because you're wrong. So what we have is from the close of the Hebrew calendar, we have 62 weeks to Jesus' triumphant entry. And then we have a gap called the church age. How long is that gap? I don't know. You don't know. Remember, remember last time we looked at 490 years and there was a gap between Ishmael's birth and, and Isaac's birth and then there was another 490 years and there was 490 years and there were gaps and subtractions. But when we look at Daniel's 70th week, there's a gap. What's that gap? The church age. Why? Because the Jews rejected their Messiah. It's funny how we got these gap periods. They're there. But in Genesis 1, we don't have the gap theory. <laughs> It's there, but it's not there. But it's over there, but it's over here. And so, 
Daniel's 70th week comes after, sometime after the rapture, and the 70th week is the tribulation period, which is seven weeks, seven years. You say, well, you got to get the, the previous message, you got to lay it out with your, your King James Bible. Don't you get a Mickey Mouse Bible. Don't you get Satan's Bible. You say, what's Satan's Bible? The, the, the Bible by Anti Lavage? No, the Satan's Bible is ASV, RSV, or those other PDQs. Get yourself a King James 1611 Bible. Open up to Acts chapter 7 and make sure it says Jesus and not Joshua. Satan is slick. Or, shall we say, subtle, unless you've got a modern Bible. So, what we need is we need to take a Bible calendar, not a Roman calendar. Well, you know, in 1988, Jesus Christ, and in 2022, Jesus... No, because God does not work off a Roman calendar. He don't look at Easter as a holiday. He looks at the Passover, though you want to be a Baptist Catholic. Oh, by the way, you know what happened? This is extra. Here we go. You, can, you don't pay for this one. The Passover is on a Friday this year. There's your Friday. But Jesus Christ didn't resurrect on, on Easter, Sunday morning. You can't get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday. That's a Catholic, or that's a Baptist Catholic teaching. You are in heresy. You are a liar. Yes, I said liar. If you teach Good Friday to Sunday morning, if your church has on Easter Resurrection Sunday, they are wrong. They are a liar. You tell them I said that. Because three days and three nights from the Passover this year, 2022, Resurrection Tuesday. And who would go to church on Tuesday? We got to get the two times that Christians go to church in the year so we can count their heads and get their pocketbooks. Judas. We can't preach the truth. We can't teach the truth because... You're not, you won't be there Tuesday, and you're not going to put money in the pot. And when I go talk to my bastard friends and all my friends and my... We had 67 for Easter. <sighs> That's okay. Hell has full of saints who thought they were saints and not saints at all. All right. That was free. Wouldn't you know something? I'm, told, I'm going to tell you the truth, and I'm going to preach the truth. I don't care what your pastor says. I don't care what you say. I don't care what the Catholics say. I don't care what the Baptist Catholics say. They're wrong. Three days and three nights from the Passover. This year is Tuesday. It's never Easter. Thank you. So what we have is a Bible calendar, not Roman, and we run it back to 30-day month. Well, that see, that rules out February. February got shortchanged. Now, if I was February, I'd go up to, to the Roman Senate or whoever and say, Hey, you guys owe me a day. February has 29 for some, I don't know why, who cares. And there are months in our calendar that have 31 days. That's wrong. And besides, the fact is, our calendar is solar. The Jewish calendar is lunar. Have you been taught that in church? Have you been taught times and all that? Uh, you know, the first day of the week. Do you know what the first day of the week is called in the Bible? Sunday. No, it's not. God would not call it Sunday, Baal Day, S U N, the solar disk around your head, Catholic. What's he call it in Genesis 1? The even in the morning word, the first day. The first day in the Bible is called the first day. Yay! You check the days of the month in our calendar and in the 
in the, uh, the months in our calendar, how they're named for Roman gods. You check that? Oh, come on. You want to learn the Bible, but you don't want to escape the paganism. And you're not going to go nowhere if you hold on to your paganism and your Easter bunnies. Because you're smooching and adulterizing with Satan. That's extra too. So when you get Genesis 7, 11, and 24. To Genesis 8, 3, for floor, 3 to 4. The flood started on the 17th of the second month. And the ark rested on the 17th of the seventh month. Five months. And it works out to be 30 days a month. According to the B-I-B-L-E. And not the P-O-P-E. I hope you're learning something. I hope in your heart to say, wow, that's interesting. Now, Clarence Larkin, many Baptist churches don't even know who Clarence Larkin is. What TV show does he play on? Turn off the booby tube. Clarence Larkin says seven weeks of 49 years. From 445 B.C., Nehemiah 2, 1 through 8, what we just read, to 396 B.C., before Christ, the close of the Old Testament. These dates and times work out exactly by an exactly God. Okay. 62 weeks, the second period of time. The 434 years, 434 years, brings us to 396 B.C. To the close of the Old Testament canon up to the cross. And at 33 A.D., thereabouts, we have the church age, God's timepiece, whatever he uses. I mean, I don't think he uses a wristwatch. But if he uses an hourglass, whatever like that, when the Jews as a nation reject the Messiah and the Gentiles are brought in, that's it. The time stops. Individual Jews can be saved during this period by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. But as a nation, there are Jews going to hell. Today, a Jew died and went to hell because he did not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Though they are in the land, they are settled as God's people, they are put up on a shelf until after the rapture of the church, and some churches are wrong because they say, well, the church is going to go in the tribulation period. You know what I say to that? <clears throat> to you. I don't know how you spell that, but one week or seven years is after the church age, that's a tribulation period, which is divided to three and a half years, tribulation, three and a half years of great tribulation. I gave you the references. And you need, what you need to do is you need to sit down with your Bible, turn off the booby tube, turn off everything around you. You need to bow your head in prayer. You need to open the Bible. You need to read. You need to study. You need a pencil. You need some paper. And you need to lay this out. And you say, Lord God, help me. Because this is hard to understand. It is. This, I told you the other night, this is steak. For me, it's pork. I love pork. I don't like steak. But for you, this is steak, mashed potatoes, salad, Tater tarts or whatever kind of green beans, the green green beans, steak sauce, the cloth napkins. I remember a place where I lived in Connecticut. Every time we had a graduation, we went to the. It's called the steak cloth. 
but this was the, you know, the, the restaurant of all restaurants to go. Well, that's what the King James Bible is. And this is not for a newborn baby. I mean, if you just recently got saved, uh, you haven't been taught, you're in an ill, fatted church. I mean, they're sick, but they're fat. They're sick, but they're fat. That don't sound sad. I think there was a dream like that. Sick and they're fat. Okay. Messiah the Prince. Now, Messiah means, is a transliteration of the Hebrew word, whoo. I sound scholarly there. <laughs> it means anointed. Yes, I'm making fun of scholars. It means anointed. PhD. Post hole diggers. Christ. Jesus Christ. You ever wonder what Christ meant? It means anointed by God. Like the kings were anointed. Like the high priests were anointed. And with, with the olive oil. You know, there's a devil anointed coming. He's called the Antichrist. He hasn't been anointed for God. He's been anointed for Satan. But God's going to use him. He's a prince. Capital P. I wonder what modern Bibles do to that. Micaiah. We're going to look at the three references here. Micaiah. That's Old Testament. Right after Jonah, which scholars don't believe. Micaiah 5 2, right after Jonah. You can hit pause right now, look at your index, and come back. But thou, Bethlehem Ephraim, thou, though be amongst the thousands of. Do you recognize this verse? This is the prophecy of the baby Jesus being born in Bethlehem, where the shepherds came, not the Magi. And that guy showed up two years later. Why? Because they wouldn't stop and ask for directions. Or something. I don't know why. But the mad guy didn't show up at Jesus' birth. i got to throw that one in there for your Baptist Catholics. Baptist Catholics, they, they got their manger scenes and they got the mad guy there. That's not Bible. Among thousands of Judah, Israel, Jewish people, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, God, that is to be a ruler, recognize that, of Israel. Who's going forth has been from the old, from everlasting. Jesus Christ has been everlasting. Jesus Christ doesn't have a beginning. Even in the prophecy of preach, uh, of, of the prophecy of his virgin birth, he's still. So notice that prince, ruler, acts. Chapter 3, Peter preaching. Acts 3.15. You're going to start to see who we're talking about in Daniel 9. In Acts 3.15, and killed the prince, look at that capital P. Look at that capital P. Whom God raised from the dead, where we are witnesses, look at verse 14, but ye denied the Holy One, H-O, and just, capital J, and desire a murderer, Barabbas, or Donald Trump, to be granted unto you. It was that Donald Trump, that insurrection he did on uh, January last year, where a guard was killed. And the Christians want Donald Trump rather than Jesus. <laughs> That didn't cost you anything either. So we know who we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus Christ. And we see Jesus Christ in Micaiah, Old Testament, and we see Jesus Christ in Daniel. Now why is this not taught in your church? Why is Jesus Christ omitted out of your church. I already gave you some examples when you started. Your pastor don't know. 
then he doesn't deserve the title he got. I'm going to tell on you. Go ahead, tell. Take a number. Stand behind me. Now serving 31. You say, what's that mean? When you go to that deli, you take that little number, and they call you to come up. Well, take your little number. Right now, I'm serving number 31. We'll get to you, maybe. Revelation. I'm an old, kind Methodist preacher. I, I, I'm getting rid of Baptist pretty soon. Uh, the name, the title. Revelation 1.5. Here we go. We'll close. And from Jesus Christ, okay, we know who that is, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, run that back to Acts 3.15, the prince, there it is, of the kings of the earth. That's a small p. Unto whom that loved us and washed us from our sins, in his own blood. That's Jesus. That's the prince. We run that with Acts 3.15 in Micaiah 5.2 in Daniel chapter 9 verse 25. It's the ruler of the Jews. When Jesus Christ comes back, sits on David's throne, king of king and lord of lords, over what group of people? American. No. Sorry. Israel. Jewish people, Hebrews, and there are people, Gentiles, there are churches today that, you know, God's all finished with the Jew. It's called replacement theology. It is out of the pits of hell. God ain't finished with, he may put them up on the shelf. Jews get saved. I support a Jewish missionary sending out Bibles, literature, and outreach missions to the Jewish people. That I will curse you that curse curse you. I will bless them that bless you. That still holds true to April 1st, 2022. It's all prophecy about Jesus Christ. And let me ask you, my friend, again. Let me close with this question. Why doesn't your church teach you what we just taught you? Why do you got to go on the internet? Why are you going to find this guy in a t-shirt at his family, teaching his family, which he puts the, the videos out for the world to hear and listen? There are too many Christians that do not know what I'm talking about. And then problem number two could be they don't care. And problem number two be we want to know about Revelation. We want to know about Revelation. <laughs> 66 books in the Bible. 